Have you ever struggled to remove a logo from a piece of clothing, a microphone at the edge of the frame, or even blemishes? Now you can let After Effects do the hard work for you. If you want to remove a static element from a static shot, it can be done pretty easily. But if this is not the case and the camera and object are moving in the shot, then object removal is a very tedious task. Or is it? Maybe it used to be. Let's explore how to use content aware fill on a few examples. We'll use the clips I found on Envato Elements, which is very affordable subscription-based service with access to almost a million assets, including stock footage, photos, music, graphics, templates, sound effects, or even editing courses. We'll start with removing a logo on this shot. The first step is to create a transparent area over the unwanted object. It can be done with a mask, keen, applied alpha mat, or even roto brush. Also, if the camera or object are moving, you need to track that movement throughout the clip. For our example, I've used Mocha plugin for tracking, and after it did its job, I created a mask out of this tracking data. This way, I don't have to keyframe the position of the mask myself. Now we need to open a new content aware field panel from the window menu. At the top of the panel, we can see the alpha channel of the whole composition. All visible layers are taken into consideration, so if you don't want certain layers to be taken into account, just turn its visibility off. This alpha expansion slider simply makes the transparent area wider if you increase that value. Sometimes it may help you to get better results. Now, the most important option to choose is the fill method. Generally, object is best for getting rid of moving objects in a frame. Surface is best for static surfaces, like for example a poster on a wall. And edge blend is best for removing static objects on surfaces that don't have much texture. So object fill method is the most advanced one, but it also takes longer to analyze than the other two. For this example, logo is not moving across the surface it's on, so we can try the surface method. The object method would also do the job, but edge blend method would not be good because we've got texture going on on the shorts. With wrench, we can simply choose to render fill layer for the duration of work area or the entire composition. In our case it doesn't matter because both are the same. If the image is complicated or you try to remove really big objects, you can create reference frame which will create a single frame that will open in Photoshop. There you can create a clean plate using clone stamp tool and other Photoshop tools to show After Effects what the image should look like and it will be taken into consideration when rendering the rest of the frames. For long takes, when the lighting or camera angle changes significantly, you may want to create multiple reference frames and do the same thing. Now we can finally hit generate fill layer button and the analysis begins. The frame under the time indicator is prioritized so this way you can see if the results are promising and if not you can stop the tool and tweak the settings. The fill layer that will be generated is an image sequence and it will be added automatically to the composition and to the project panel. To enter additional settings we can click on the menu icon and choose content aware fill settings. If you generate multiple fill layers you can tell After Effects to delete unused fill layer footage. And there is a logic behind it, because these files that are generated with default settings are just huge. I've done some tests and the smallest image size is for 8-bit sequence of Photoshop files. And this is very good setting if you just want to distribute to the web and if content aware fill is the last step before exporting. However, if the clip will be color graded or handed to VFX artist, you should export to 16 or 32 bit per channel image sequence. Just bear in mind that it will be a lot of data. There are many scenarios when this feature will make your life easier, from logo removal like the one we just performed, to removing the camera equipment that somehow happened to find its way into the frame and to the more complex scenarios when you want to bend the reality. For the second example, let's remove the car from this shot. Once again, I open the clip in Mocha and draw a shape around the car and its shadow. Because it's coming out of the frame, I start tracking from the middle and next I track backwards from the same place. Now in After Effects under Matte in Mocha effect, I choose Create After Effects Masks. I change the mode to Subtract to make a hole in the clip, tweak Alpha Expansion choose object fill method and click generate button. In this case it took a few minutes to analyze 8 seconds long clip and results speak for itself. 
By the way, have you ever been in the situation where this new feature would be useful? Let me know down in the comments. And in the third example, we will use Edge Blend Fill method. This clip has been shot with the sticker over the logo. Because no one will be able to figure out that it's Mac this way, right? It's stupid, but you know, stock footage. Here I decided to create a mask manually because there is very little movement and keyframing mask position was just a piece of cake. I chose Edge Blend method because this surface lacks texture. Then I hit the Generate Fill Layer button. This method is a little bit faster, so relatively quickly we are done and it looks like it's not Mac after all. Now that you know how Content Aware Fill works, it's time that you get familiar with 28 new updates to AP release of Premiere Pro 2019. Or if Premiere Pro is not your thing, then check out the tutorial for my double exposure channel intro. Hit that subscribe and bell icons and see you there!